So today, here's basically what we're going to be doing. We're going to use fastcharacter.com to create our character sheets, fast and easy. We're going to okay. review a little bit of how to play D&D, just the basics, not all the rules and numbers and all that, just the basics. Then we're going to play. Then if we have any time left, we're going to sketch a poster in quotations, meaning a picture that has more than one character in it <laughs> for our campaign, which is going to be themed around search and rescue. So I am going to head over to fastcharacter.com. Whoops, I got to get these controls out of the way. Can you link it? I always get the wrong website when I search for it. Sure, no problem. Let me copy and paste it in the chat. I think I have to stop my share to paste it in the chat. Oh, sorry. No problem. I'm just talking to myself because sometimes I forget how all these things work. So that's where we're going. Sorry. Fastcharacter.com. No problem. And we're going to do this all together, step by step. So I'm going to share my screen again on fastcharacter.com. The first one's easy. Your name. Your player's name. I assume I'm going to have to like write this down in my character sheet because I don't know if I can, you know. This is the character sheet. This is going to give oh. us a character sheet. So that's why we're going to use it to get it done fast and then we can play. <laughs> Okay, if you, uh, you didn't send a link. I didn't get a link. It didn't appear in the chat? Let me go see again. It's just fastcharacter.com. Yeah, I keep sending me like a mascot. Week. Some dude like will design a mascot for me. Like me website. Again. For some reason, it went to the waiting room. I don't know why it did that. It never did <laughs> that before. So I will just send it individually in case you guys need it. Thank okay. you. Yep, there it is. So back to my screen share. First I one did, player's name is your name. I did not make a name for this character. Did you make a name for your character, Betsy? I mean, Chris, I mean, Kristen. Finrai. Finrai? Shin, like Shin. the shin of your leg, Shinrai. Mm. I think oh, that's good. I should something in Japan. <laughs> Well, the good news is if you don't have a name, they will randomly give your character a name. Over here on Oh, campaign, never mind. I did write a name down. I just found out. I wrote down Aldea. Oh, there you go. Ald. A-L-D-I-A. Yeah, A-L-D-E-A. Got it. If you want to distinguish that this was for the search and rescue game, you can put that in the campaign or player ID. As we are talking about, the last thing in this section is use a random character name or use the name you have already and you can type it in right there. Let me know when you have completed those three things. Sorry, I was, I was reacting to something my dad said. No problem. That's why I'm going to wait until you guys have put in those three things. Put in what again? Sorry. The player's name right at the top. It says player's name. So that's where your name goes as Mickey. Below that is the campaign or player ID. That's where you type in your search and rescue. And then over to the right, it says use a random character name or use the name that you type in the box right there. Mm. Okay, I got, I get it now. Great. Last time we talked about how race is being taken away from D&D, but it hasn't happened yet. So we're just going to keep using race. So you can pick the race that your character is from this very long, 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 long list of different races. Just for example's sake, I'm going to be a human. Below that, we choose a class. Again, there's a long, long, long list. For the sake of example, I'm going to be, and you know, there's that stuff in the parentheses. It says like path of the berserker or domain of knowledge. That's stuff we don't need. Don't even worry about that part. Just pick the main thing. If you need a refresher on what all of these things are, let me know. But I think you guys already chose uh, your classes last time, if I remember. We did. 
Yeah, okay. So I'm going to be Ranger just for the sake of an example. Underneath that, it says background. We want it to match to fit class. It's the very first option right above player's handbook. Match it to fit the class. This is just going to. Do we do alignments or no? I forget. Uh, it's not going to make any difference in our game. That's another thing that D and is pretty much getting rid of. But if you want to put in alignment, you can. Or there's a choice no. of random, but no evil characters. That's what I would prefer. No evil characters. Nobody needs to be the villain here. Yeah. Your level is going to be three. And then if you want to specify a gender for a random name, that would be here, but you already typed in your name. You don't even have to deal with that one. Whoops. Then our next okay. section, it has Pull down menus for strength, dexterity, con, intelligence, wisdom, charisma. We have the numbers that you can put into anything that you want. 15, 14, 13. Oh, I need to write this down. Oh, no. <laughs> it just goes oh, down no. in order. Okay, can you just say that? What? Hold on, wait. Can you say that? What? Yeah. We're going to start at 15. You get one, 15. One fourteen. 15, fourteen. One thirteen. Thirteen. One twelve. Twelve. And two 11s. 11, 11. Okay, thank you for that. You're welcome. And we remember the tomato and uh, metaphor or uh, example that strength is crushing a tomato, dexterity is catching a tomato, con is eating a rotten tomato and surviving to tell the tale, intelligence is knowing a tomato is a fruit, wisdom, you don't put a tomato in a fruit salad, charisma, you can sell a tomato-based fruit salad because you're just so loved by the people. So you can put these anywhere you want. I'm just going to put some in here randomly, but I am going to have the numbers 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 11. 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 11. Yes. Strength is going to be 15 for me. And the next is charisma. So 14, it's going to add our numbers automatically, right? So we don't exactly. have to. Exactly. So we don't have to. <laughs> oh, that's good. That's very, very good for me. And you've got these next three boxes that say optional rule, choose first feet, choose second feet, choose third feet. We're not really using those. So we're going to say this first option of none, ignore feet options for all of those. Ignore, okay. Ignore feet options. And then at the bottom one, we're going to say no, let the DM award separately per the adventure or campaign. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm, I'm still doing the number thing, so no problem. I'll pause okay. here. Huh? I'm thinking like, do paladins need intelligence or wisdom? Uh, I can yeah, this character is kind of stupid, so. <laughs> but I'm afraid we're gonna be too much the same this time. But we're gonna go search and rescue and find out. Yeah, <laughs> we'll find out. My character a little dumb also. <laughs> yeah, so I should probably be smarter. I should be like smarter then. I should be smarter then. I, I vote yes. Yeah, you can change it if you want. Yeah, wait, which, wait, hold on. Which one of us is going to be the smart one? Quick question. Which one of us? Which one of us? Not me. Because I'm not an urchin. So it's young and stupid. And I'm not okay, actually then playing this a one character, like, so. 
It's you, Michaela. You're going to be the smart one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. One of, us, one of us should know a little bit better. Somebody. <laughs> I mean, it's fun anyway. If you can't find clues right off the bat, you just, you know, wander around a little bit more. <laughs> or an NPC has to come running up and go, wait, wait, I just saw something over there and point you in the right direction. Lastly, yeah, okay. we have describe your character and they give you the option if you know that you want one of your personality traits to be like you always tell bad puns, then you can go ahead and type it in. If you have no ideas for these, you can leave them blank and they will automatically be filled in, but then like you're supposed to play that character. So I like to go ahead and even if I just put like, oh, I'm always humming, we're not going to actually play that, but it's better than getting yeah, told okay. that I'm always snobby and like, oh, I played that last character, I don't want to be snobby again. That's a good point. Okay, uh, hold on, I'm trying to remember, like think in words, because the character always trying to prove themselves, no, always, like, like, Okay. I'm listening to you. I'm trying to light off. Yeah. Now my now my parents are talking. Okay. Trying to Just a reminder that the ideal is the principle that you strive for or your character strives for. So that could be protecting the weak or seeing justice is served or treating others to the way you want to be treated. Do you have to what? Yeah. Do, do I have to like make it wordy? Because I, I I'm trying to think of wording like. Nah. Like. Yeah, I'm Just trying to think ideal. Be the like be someone who someone someone would want to sing about. There you go. Be Your bond is going to be a connection to a person, place, or thing. So a bond could be like you would do anything for your baby sister. Or a bond could be like you are trying to make your way back to your home village after being swept away by a tornado. Or you're looking for a very special necklace that was stolen from you. It's going to be a connection to a person, place, or thing. It doesn't even have to be lost or far away from you. You can just say like, my ax is my best friend. That'd be your bond. I do anything for this ax. And then your flaw, of course, is your shortcoming. So something that gets in the way of being awesome. So maybe you're scared of spiders, scared of the dark, spend too much money, Sleep too much, eat too much. Hmm, I'm trying to think of like wording for gets in fights so that so like does stuff to get pe does the most stuff, tries to do the most stuff. Uh. Competitive? No, I don't think it's competitive. Like they don't want to like get in. They're not like trying to like go against somebody. It's more like they just want to do the most things to most. You just want to like, be the best. Yeah, like cool things to so that way. Yeah, perfectionist. I guess. Yeah, perfectionist maybe. No, not perfectionist. Like they don't want to do everything perfectly. They want to want to be famous. They, yeah, basically they want to be famous. Like they want to like let's they want to do stuff to tell stories about. Yeah, want to be famous. There you go. I guess be famous. I guess <laughs> would do anything for fame. I guess it's not the correct wording, but I'll, whatever. I'll, I'll whatever. As long as you understand it, that's probably yeah. what matters yeah. most. So then, lastly, we have the display format. And this is basically if you want it vertical to print out and you can choose if you want it in color or grayscale to save some of your ink. Or if you're just going to keep it on your screen, you might want it 
a horizontal layout. That's kind of up to you. We've used vertical ones in the past, so I'm going to go ahead and choose vertical color, color character sheet portrait, and I'll click to show you what it looks like. Man, this would be a terrible thing to, to, to paint out because, you know, stuff changes on character sheets. Yeah, but since we're playing so short, nothing's going to change, so <laughs> we have our stuff all done. I have that, wait, I have that wizard character who I played a one shot with you and is richer now. Oh, yeah. We're going to take some old characters, get Ling back in the mix and your wizard character. Oh, we could do that. I feel like that's almost pointless because, well, Neil actually does have a point. I'm just thinking like, uh, that the character's not going to, never mind. Nope, never mind. The thing I wasn't going to say doesn't, nah. So this will give you all the numbers that we use in D&D. &D. There's your speed, there's your armor class, there's your hit points. Remember, if your hit points go to zero, you're knocked out. And we'll give all your information there. You'll find some stuff that you maybe don't you don't know what it does. Like I've got uh, prepared spells, and it says in my prepared spells I have hunter's mark and animal friendship. Maybe I don't know what that means. Don't worry about it. If it comes up in game, I will let you know if it's useful or not. Or if you want to do a quick Google search, you press D and D, hunter's mark, and it should bring up an explanation of what that spell does. I'll go ahead and demonstrate now. Anything you want to look up, you go D and D. You might want to put in 5E, that stands for fifth edition, because there have been five versions of this game that are very different from one another. And then I type yeah. in the name of the spell, Hunter's Mark. It's even given it for me or put it auto filled it in. And you'll get something that will tell you exactly what it does. It says, oh, I choose a creature and I can see and I can mystically mark it as my quarry and I get bonusy stuff because I chose to mark this as my quarry. Now, now, where did you find that thing that you're talking about? This Google. hunter's mark? Yep, I just go to google.com. Google yeah, but where was it on your on your, on Roll your 20? page? Oh, on my page. On my page, it was, whoops, let me go back to my page. Uh, my character at the very bottom here, it says prepared spells. Not every character has spells. Oh, okay. Okay. You might have something in your ring or in your class features. Like, see, I have a whole bunch of stuff like natural explorer, prime evil awareness. I don't know what any of this stuff does. <laughs> if you're curious, you can Google it. Most of the time it won't affect our game. So I'm not going to, you know. So I have this list. little confusion because I, I was working on a character who's a young person whose bond is to her ex. Mm -hmm. But it, it turns out I'm 62 years old and I'm an archer. An archer? How did they give you an archer? I have a short bow, a uh -huh. rapier, and a scimitar, but no axe. But no X. Oh, ah. No, well, let's just change that manually. Can we? Can we? Let's see. I assume Let's they let you. Can I save as? If we can save it as like a JPEG or something, we can take it into Fire Alpaca and just erase what we want and type in. Oh, no ah. problem. Good. I'm sure we can do that. No, I'm not sure. Oh. Um, Possibly not. HTML single file complete. That's not what I want. Also, sorry for that alarm. I literally can't turn that off. No problem. Huh. Back to generate another character. it into a PDF. Let's look at the frequently asked questions. Maybe they've got something. 
All right, let's see what it's going to do. What's it going to do? Okay, there it is. Yay. Yay, it did all this stuff for me. Oh, that's so nice. nice. Oh, I have a long sword and a javelin. Cool, cool. I have light armor. Huh, doesn't say. We might have to just print them out and <laughs> scribble it on with pen here. I can't find. Any yeah, I can't find it. a way to even save it. Yeah. So we have to print it or we'll lose it. But I just, I'm just gonna screenshot. I'm just gonna like, I'm just gonna. Oh, screenshot. Like, Maybe we can screenshot. Then... If you have a print yeah. screen button on your keyboard, not mine just goes into a different view. Yeah, I'm just gonna like screenshot it and then take the um the character sheet thing I already have in my in my uh in my uh, computer and then just write down all the stuff for it there okay well, i'm gonna see if my changing oops i see if my screen cap worked here my whole new okay oh, okay well that's not great but it kind of works so well, i can i can print it easy enough and it, it comes out nice on a um, okay so i could get a pdf of it and and then i can just yeah I well, well it. yeah we'll get rid of your arrows and we'll give you an x for sure okay <laughs> that's all i care about because my bond is to my axe yeah, to your axe <laughs> you have to have an axe the first thing i do is lose it <sighs> I'm just going to look up the stats for War Axe real quick so that when you get into a battle, I can tell you, okay, roll this, roll that. Oh, that's good. That up there. Okie dokie. You guys can still see my whole screen. Can you see this uh, slideshow right now? Yes. Yes, okay. So we did our fastcharacter.com, got our numbers, except for our Axe, but <laughs> we'll get that in there. Let's review how to play real quick. Remember, there is no winning or losing. Dungeons and Dragons is a game where the goal of the game is for us to tell a story of adventure together. No winners or losers. Anytime a character attempts to do something that can change the course of our story, the DM, that's me, will ask you to roll a dice to determine the outcome. So you will need your virtual dice roller or some real dice. The dungeon master narrates what your character experiences and observes in the world lets the players know when to roll dice and takes care of the rules. The DM also plays the NPCs who inhabit the world of the story, such as townsfolk. So a quick example here, you as a player wouldn't say, oh, I see the stolen money over there. No, you would have to ask me, what do I see? Because I'm the one who arbitrates or narrates what's in the world. So you ask me and then I would say, oh, you see a bag poking out behind the curtain something like that. And so your character can only see what I've narrated to you, if that makes sense. Another example is rather than saying, oh, I rolled a dice, I rolled a 16 on investigation. What clues do I find? That's kind of boring because then the dice is just running the game. You tell me, I want to look for these kinds of clues. I want to look for clues of how the robber entered the lock room then I would say, okay, we'll roll a dice and we'll see what clues you find uh, about the robber entering the, entering the locked room. So it doesn't just become a rolling dice continuously and then I just blurt out information. You got to know what you're looking for. Then I'll let you know what you find. Combat mode. When characters enter in a combat mode, I ask you to roll initiative to decide the turn order. So it's going to change whenever we go into battle. This means that the bad guys could go first or you could go first. It all depends on the initiative roll. When you're in combat mode, your turn, no matter how long it takes you to decide what to do in the real world, it will be six seconds long in the story. So that means you get one action, your movement and a bonus action. And I will always let you know what you can do for those three things. Some reminders at the bottom there, you can try to attack an enemy with a weapon 
You can try to cast a spell. You can try to use a skill or an item that you might have, or you can use the dash action to go twice your normal distance. And my thing froze. Oh, that's it. Let's start playing then. Let me exit that. So those little extras, can you do that every time? Every single time if you go, I'm dashing every every time. Yes, but if you dash, you couldn't make an attack. You couldn't do anything else because that is your turn. Ah, you you decided to go move twice as far rather than. Do but otherwise, attack. I get three. Yeah, you're things. Running, you're I get an so attack hard. And, a, and I move and a. Yeah, let me get back to my camera here. Okay, okay. Couple of things I'm going to need. I told you that your NPCs were going to be, or yeah, your NPCs are going to be characters. So the name of that shy, quiet paladin. Do we have Sam. a name? Sam. <laughs> Sam, that's fine. I, and then Michaela. I never made a name. Nope, I never named or named them. Nope. That's fine. I'll just randomly assign a name. That's going to be Carla. Sick. I'm gonna I'm gonna put on a whole and then I had a sort of blocky squarish uh, sorcerer character that's going to be Alberon. Okay. So remind me, I believe Kristen's character was already a part of the search and rescue team. Awesome. True or no? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't okay. know we started before. We, we haven't. No, we before. were. We were. No, we were just talking about whether or not you guys were going to be part of the normal search and rescue team, or if you were hired to find. Oh yeah, I'll be part of the team. That's what okay. I do all the time, every have day. An companion. Yes, I was letting you guys choose an animal companion if you're part of the search and rescue team. You can choose right now if you want and just say, I have a dog, I have a crocodile, I have a parrot. Dog. All right. So Shinrai has a dog. Any 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 breed or, or no? Nah? I'll, I'll design it maybe by next week. <laughs> by next week. <laughs> right we'll now, it's everybody. just the dog. <laughs> <laughs> and then Aldea, are you, or Aldea? How do you Whatever. say your, doesn't matter, okay. Uh, are you part of the regular search and rescue team or did you get hired? Hire. A hire. Okay, let me put that down too. All right, so I'm going to narrate kind of the first part of the story where you just get going and find out, whoops, find out what you're supposed to do and stuff because that takes a long time most of the time and we don't have a whole lot of time. So, up in the north country where a heavy snowfall has been coming down for days and weeks and months and it's blocking out all sunlight and the people are getting <laughs> very much tired of it all. Unfortunately, a young, was it a paladin or your NPC, Michaela? Carla, Carla and Sam, oh, excuse me, Carla and Alberon have gone missing while on a mission to find the stone of everlasting warmth to try to get some warmth back to the town. They have gone missing and it was Shinrai's uh, mission objective to go and find them. Unfortunately, the department's been a little short staffed. A lot of search and rescue parties have been going out and finding people caught in the snow. So you had to hire some outside help. You went to the local local tavern, local pub where we always hire our uh, short term employees and you found Aldia. I promised that you guys would get to buy your cold gear. So we are going to start off in a quaint little shop on the edge of town run by a shy Triton Paladin named Sam. And as you open the door, you hear the little jingle of the bell and Sam, who is a little shy guy, says, welcome. What, what can I do for you? Hello, young fish man. I would like to buy some of your. Oh, you cut out some of your what? 
some of your gear. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. We have the basic gear here for 12 gold. We have the wool lined gear for 24 gold. And, and, and we have some magic items too. Great. Okay, are you gonna like show us something? Or yeah, just... I'm looking for the uh, I'm looking for the slide that I had that showed you guys the items. But if you just want to buy the whole set, it's a flat twelve or twenty four. Uh, this one. Let me share my screen real quick. The last I checked, Kristen had 30 gold and Michaela had 26, I believe. So your basic gear adds a plus one to your resist cold saving throw. Every once in a while, I'm going to say we got to check to see if you are feeling any symptoms of hypothermia. And if you fail the roll, bad things happen. So this protective gear adds this number to your roll and costs this much over here. We have the wool gear that will add plus two, five gold each. And then we'll have magic enchanted items that add three. So you can mix and match however you like. In fact, can I just share this document? That might be easier. Share the link. So it's like the magic armor, all of the magic items that. Say one more time, you got clipped off at the end there. So is the magic armor the only magic items they have? Yes, those are the only ones in stock. I'm going to give you the link so you can just look at it on your own screen. That might be easier than trying to see it on my screen. I forgot what magic item my character had. You had the amulet of warming. Oh, sick. Which I think is at the bottom here. Yep, there's all the magic items at the bottom that which you can also purchase. Oh. And I think Kristen won the compass of finding on her roll. Boy, I don't remember any of this. Oh, wait, that's a good thing to have. have. It's a good thing to have, yeah. I better write that down. And on the sheet, you can also see that there's the actual uh, breakdown of what happens for a resist cold saving throw. This is what's going to happen when you guys get out on the trail. I'll say make a resist cold saving throw. You're going to roll a d20. 12 does or higher my, success. Quick question. Does my amulet, does it work all the time where I always get? Okay. All the time. Yep. It's just humming away as you wear it. Cool. What color does it come in? The wool ones. We have it in blue or black. And how about that, uh, the magic enhanced? Does that change the color? I'll say yes. Yeah. To what? <laughs> to, 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 to whatever you want. I can have any color I want? Great. Um, <laughs> I'll take that cold, worn, heavy coat, and I'd like it in, in a royal purple. Right away, and he bustles away to go get your cold, worn, heavy coat, and he'll take 15 away from your gold. You should have 15 left. Okay, then I want to have um, the wool, gloves, and scarf. Wool, gloves, and... Scar. In blue, please. In blue, he gets those to you, and that'll be another 10 gold. 
So I have five left. I'm trying to do math in my yes. head, which is not my strong suit. I feel your pain, man. I'll take the potion with my last five. And a p -p 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 potion, and he gives you that and accepts your last. I like going barefoot. <laughs> yeah, I tried to think like, okay, I have 26, so like 15, and then like, wait, would I get more if I just, uh, if I just bought if I just bought the entirety of the wool gear or would I get more if I bought like some of the wool gear and then bought one of the magic enchanted like you know I'm just trying to do math mm -hmm. I, like, just uh, like going to the grocery store right I have to put yeah. that back if I <laughs> buy this one and, but this one's better but but I could get yeah. two of the other one go with the cheap one sometimes but not always yeah yeah so I got 25 so, and then I got 15, so that, like I, I'm doing math and I think, okay, I guess like wool gear would be the best for me, All probably. Right. Yeah, well, the entirety of wool gear, like, I shall take all of your wool gear. I mean, one set, <laughs> not the entire store. <laughs> right, right away. So that's gonna be five, 10, 15, 20, 25 gold and you'll have one gold piece left. Nice. Oh, also, I'm glad I chose this character voice. I was not planning it, but this is kind of fun. <laughs> All right. You definitely sound smarter than me. <laughs> so with your new gear, there's a changing room and you change into your cold gear and then you head out on the trail. The last, like last communication, last word you heard from the missing folks was that they were going to be traveling along the West River. So you head out along the West River and nice. let me know um, your, let's see if the sheet has it. Should it be like passive wisdom or passive perception. Let me check on the sheet. Oh yeah, I got that. It's, um, hold on, give me a second to zoom out. My passive perception is 10. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's at the very bottom there. Not the very, very bottom, but the bottom of the six big numbers. Okay, I got to find my character sheet again. So Dia's got a 10. This is basically the clues that you will find without having to roll for them. Eh. Oh, there it is. All right, now I have to go where to find it? Uh, right underneath all of your skills. It'll say passive wisdom in kind of a bold font. Oh, passive wisdom perception, 10. Yep, 10. Okay, you guys both have 10. So as you are traveling along, you stumble upon some indentations in the snow, which look like they could be footprints of something. But at first glance, you can't tell. Do you want to just keep walking or inspect them? I I think we should inspect them. Um, you're you're a ranger, correct? I am a ranger, and I know you're just a beginner. That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. I'll indulge you. Yes, I. We'll look around. Okay, we'll, can... we'll, we'll do whatever you say on this one because I don't see any danger. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, no. Um, I was going to hold on. Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of words. You know, don't rangers have like like a skill that lets them track or whatever? Oh, let me check. I'm a ranger. Uh, da, 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 da. They have primal oh. awareness. So Kristen's character will be able to sense any creature within one mile. Uh, so nobody can get the jump on you. And oh. you get proficiency on wisdom and intelligence. Oh, that's on your favorite tree. No, that doesn't apply then. All right. So if you're looking for clues, you're going to roll for investigation. You're going to have to get your either virtual or regular d20. We've got to get. So Mikey's doing this, right? Mickey's doing this. Mm -hmm. So 
I just can sit. I assume and you were doing this, while. but whatever. No, I think I, uh, I investigation. I'm not. You do it. Okay, I got a two. I got a two. <laughs> so you what look at these. Print? Yeah, you make your best guess about like, oh, looks like some kind of animal made these. And you a don't squirrel. actually. Yeah, exactly. Or a moose. A yeah. squirrel or a moose. Okay. Very good. Very <laughs> exactly. good. I can see this is going to be a big, exciting. Never mind. I'm experienced. <laughs> okay, got an ass. All right. So as you continue, you come to the West River and a bridge that is normal. Oh, I thought you were going to investigate those. No. Oh, that's all right. There's plenty of plenty of ways to find these guys. You come to the bridge and it has some claw marks on it. It has a few pieces of ripped fabric. And at, after you go across the bridge in the snow, there's more uh, like upturned snow where there's been people walking back and forth, probably some kind of confrontation. And there is a split path. One goes down into an ice cave. The other goes uphill. Hmm. What would you uh, like to do? I, I, believe, uh, I believe before we, do, we go, we should investigate this marks to, to see like if I'm trying to like think of words while speaking um, to see if, if it gives us clues on their whereabouts or which way they went. Yeah, no, okay. I think it's odd myself that we saw the claw marks on one side and the ripped claw and then we crossed over to find the confrontation. I have a suspicion we are going the wrong way and that forget those two paths, we should go back. So we should, we better check out this. I think we should go back to the claw marks and, and do some investigation there because that's that's just the wrong order for things. That sounds correct. I have a Unless lot of experience. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a d20, and you're going to add your number that's next to investigation. So I get to. Oh, I, I accidentally time. rolled. Yeah. I accidentally rolled two d20s, and one of them was a five, and another was a twenty. Well, let's take the twenty. Well, <laughs> okay, so what's what's your number to add to the twenty? Um, one. One 21. investigation. 21. 21 on investigation. That sounds pretty good. Off to the side, you suddenly see a path that has been covered up somewhat by the low hanging branches of the pine trees. You just see like, oh, there is a trail. And it's on this side of the bridge, the front side, the first side of the bridge. The side where the claw marks are. I'd like to take a better look, look at Fred. that. Look, Fred, look what I have found. Like I just call her, like, <laughs> like I well done. That. Well, well done for a beginner. I think that's, that's good. <laughs> In fact, I, <laughs> Thank you. It, it fits with my understanding of what we should, uh, but that path, I, I, I'd like to be sure that of the paths around it, it looks fresh. So I think we should go take a better look at that path. So can I do an investigation at this time? Sure. Okay, I want to investigate that new path. I have to All find right. My, where the heck is my... Uh, ah, dice roller. I'm doing a 20. Yep, a d20. 19. Whoa, Ooh, and if you have good. anything to add from your skills, investigation skills, you can add, but 19 is pretty solid. Investigation, where is, what is that? It's under skill. Oh, skills, mm -hmm. Invest I gotta get a, a bigger something. <laughs> Intimidation, I have, oh no. Okay, 19, going with 19. 19? 
All right, so with that 19, you can see that the tracks are fresher here. You can see that the ones that look like they were made by a regular like human boot are spaced far apart as if they were running. But there's only one set of humanish tracks and there's two yeah. people missing. Hmm. Of course, if one of them was captured, they might be carrying them. Or maybe one of them was a werewolf and turned on the other. Oh my lord. <laughs> <laughs> wow, yeah, that, that jumped to a new genre right there, but sure, go ahead. <laughs> I, yeah, I, you're quite a clever person. You, you have a lot of thoughts that I, 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 I just wouldn't have. But, um, I think we have to go after, we don't know which one, and we have, we're supposed to get the both. My, I don't really, really want to rescue a werewolf, but let's, let's try to get at least one. And, and maybe that person could tell us more about the other. Yes, yes, that sounds like a good plan. A werewolf. <laughs> let's, let's walk, let's, let's follow this path. So you start following this path and I'm going to ask you for your first resist cold check. So you're going to roll your d20. Oh, okay. So I got the, I got the amulet. I, hold on, I wrote down my number of cold. Yeah, I think Michaela's I thought I'm going to add 11 and then yep, 11. Kristen is going to add, what did it come out less? Hold on, I gotta re I gotta reload this page because it's not working. I didn't buy any boots and socks that might have hurt me. Maybe that was why. Yeah, okay, because you I, only I had a, seven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I I took a chance on that one. I got a six plus eleven, so. Yep, you're fine. You're all warm and cozy. I got fifteen. Yep, you're fine. You're warm and cozy. You've been walking barefoot your whole life, so it doesn't affect you. I told you, I like it. I like it. Yes. All right. So as you continue down this path, following the fresh tracks, they come again to a split path, one that leads downward into the valley. And you can see that the wolf tracks or the animal tracks or the werewolf tracks, whatever tracks they are, stop here as it gets into like more compacted uh, ground so that the tracks don't uh, sink in as deep. And you can't quite tell where the beast went, but you can tell that the human definitely went down into this little valley. Mm. And there's also some very strange looking bushes to either side of this mm. path. Do you think they could be alive? I, I whisper. <laughs> Do you th the bushes, is that what you're asking about? Yeah. The I, I, oh, the bushes. Okay. Right. Yeah, the, the the bushes. I don't think there's a person. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't sense that an animal is within a mile of us. And it's, are is, the bushes in a mile of us? They are. Now, they, they are. The they're not are. an animal, so they could be. Yeah. Um, I don't know if if they were a disguised a werewolf, but I don't know anything that disguises itself as a bush. No, but like uh, you're. Yeah, just out of gave your sense it does tell you when animals are near, but anything that's like an animated plant, you wouldn't be able to tell if it's near or not. I have fought many uh, animated plants in my time. <laughs> that's classic. I gotta put down that in my quotes. <laughs> I have fought many an animated plant. Well, what do you think? <laughs> How do they look to you? Uh a roll investigation check. <laughs> oh, okay, let's let's we we, we better that find out. Oh, that one's going to be perception. Perception check. Okay, perception. Uh, hold on, let me find my perception skill. Perception, perception. Persuasion. Okay, it's a zero. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Uh, it's going to be a five. Okay, so it's a plus eight. It's an eight in total. An eight in total. All right. You can tell that they are the same sort of shape as the animated plants that you have fought in the past, but you're not entirely sure if these are. 
So I'm actually coming alive. Well, I have a very big axe. So it could, I so could take a swing. I don't know if I could take a swing, but could I take a swing? You could take a swing. How, how about that? <laughs> I have not bought any animated plants, but what would what do you think if I just swing my axe at them? I'm really good. Mm, be careful. You don't want to anger them. You oh, might you want you you might want to look at them first. I I, I don't want to get soon. close to them. You come from here, right? <laughs> Maybe we should just keep going. We know that the person, the human, went ahead down, and that that person could maybe help us because mm. we're after two people. So it, it, if you think it might not be safe and you are the animated plant expert, I think you should just move quietly through and on down. Mm. Oh, you know what? All right. We got We got to keep our uh, All right. you know, a job to do, a job. Let's go. Um, right. We must so keep our wits about us. So as you go quietly through, which was the key words that I needed so that these animated plants didn't come alive and get you, you go silently <laughs> past these plants and continue down the trail, coming upon a little clearing where the trail goes cold at first glance. I think we need to um, check this area pretty closely. That sounds correct. So um, I'm, I'm going to investigate now. Are you looking for clues uh, for the person or the wolves or? I say the person, because I feel like that's our first, our first thing that we're looking I for. I totally agree. The person. OK, go ahead and give me a, an investigation check. Eight. Both of you can do it if you want. No, wait. Nine. It's a nine. Nine. You got a nine. Let me check mine. I got a nine also. Another nine. Okay. With two nines. I'm going to say that you can tell that there a the pile of rocks would cover somebody's tracks if they were trying to hide which way they were going from their pursuers. They might want to climb on rocks. Like that seems the only way they could go without going into fresh snow and leaving more tracks. Let's say that. <laughs> if that well, let's, let's, let's take a chance. I, and I don't think that, I, I know that Carla and Alberon don't fly. So I'm, I think we follow the rocks. What do you, what do you think? I agree. You agree, all right. As you climb up these rocks, you can see that some of them have strange markings on them, somewhat like a rune, and it seems to be a sort of puzzle, possibly. Oh. Hmm. Again, My, more choice uh, if you want to stop and investigate or if you want to continue on. Hmm, I, I think we, hmm. I, do I you failed think rooms. we might wish? Yeah, let's let's <laughs> stop for a second. Okay, let's stop. Yeah, I, I tell you that, that I'm very good with an axe, but I failed runes. Do you have <laughs> failed runes class? <laughs> I, I mean, obviously they're there and ignoring yeah. them sounds stupid, but um, but they were well, unless that guy stopped, unless the maybe runner... this opened some sort of tunnel which to which they have crawled through to escape their pursuers do you think you could you might be able to make them out if we brush the snow away and stuff possibly quite possibly quite possibly let's, let's. why don't you give that a try because i i think it, it, it would be the smartest thing we could do if you all can read them all right um okay so wait what is this a puzzle or like is this a investigation check or it is arcana because this is something magical. Give me an arcana check to see. I mean, you brush away the snow and you can see the pictures, but they don't have any hmm. meaning unless you roll well. 
Okay, Arcana check is 12 plus 1, so 13. 12 plus 1 is 13. Oh, okay. So you can tell that this is a message of help. Oh. Basically like an SOS. And oh. it shows the direction upward on this rocky path going up the mountain that's like, I went that way. Please send help. <laughs> oh, my. My. Um, wait, what's your character name? What's your character name? My character. Shinrai. Shinrai says that that's a call for help. That's that's my job. That's yes, your job it too. Is called are, let's help. go. Let's go. That's that's what we're here yep, for. We're going. All Even right. if that was not the person we were sent for, when a ranger gets a call for help, you go. go. All right. I'm, I'm glad I studied in Arcana class. <laughs> I'm glad you did too. Let's hurry. So you guys are hurrying up the rock and I would like you both to give me a perception check. Perception. All right, uh, perception. Oh, no. Is that uh, a also? Yep, a d20. And then you add whatever number is by your perception. Uh-oh, I got a four. A four, okay. I got an eight. An eight. And a zero. An eight plus a zero, okay. Not enough to find anything except that uh, Shinrai, because you have the ability to sense when creatures are within a mile, you do sense a number of creatures up ahead. I don't know that your oh. ability can oh, no, identify what they are. Just it's, it's animals. Can I? Animals would include people? No. Oh, so there's animals up there, and there's animals. Are and they're not our our. Can you you said to like oh. anything about them, like size or like sound? You can give me a nature check if you want to, Kristen, and that will tell you how much more you know about. Let's do a nature check. Um, so I gotta roll something. What should I roll? A d20. Yep, it's always a d20. And then you're gonna add your nature bonus. 16. Ooh, there we go. Big numbers. All right. I got to find my bonus nature check and, and where I'm, I'm nature. Uh, nothing, but I got a 16. Nothing. Yeah, 16 is good. So you know from living in these areas most of your life that there is a specific kind of ice wolf that has the ability to turn into ice vapor at will. And so it leaves no tracks. It usually goes in packs of five and that this could very well be what is up ahead. Hmm. That would explain what we saw at the top of the trail too. And you living slaying... here is more likely than a werewolf. Um, hmm. Do you think slaying them would give us some sort of glory? Glory? Yes. We are, we are doing a job. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? <laughs> okay, yeah, 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 Glory, yeah, yeah, for sure. But it's also think, part of our job. <laughs> yes. Do you think like a like? Hold on, sorry. Uh, do you do you think that maybe slaying them would make uh, the safer? Sorry, uh, sorry, I'm bad at character voice. Do you think that slaying them might might lessen the danger of? Like, you know, maybe she's up ahead. Oh, I, I think slaying them is definitely uh, absolutely going to have We're not going to scare them away. And that these are not the kind of wolf you want to mess with at all. Um, however, uh, it occurs to me that it, if you are very interested in glory, uh, you could go on ahead and slay them all yourself. Hmm. How many and are there? Five, usually five. Five. Oh, I don't want to do it because I think it's in character for me to go off. <laughs> oh, this is such. Oh, I shouldn't have get. Oh, this is going to be an interesting. Uh -huh. character uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> However, uh, you know, probably if we went together, there would still be glory. Don't worry, and we'd have a, a better chance of success, which is the job. Hmm. Yes, that that sounds. Correct. And and frankly, you can have all the glory. 
Oh, I, I don't care. Are you sure? Yeah, yeah. I'm I'm in for the long haul, pal. You're just here for one job. Okay. <laughs> okay. So are we gonna get in a fight? We're gonna get in a fight. Pretty much. As you climb up the rocks and just over the peak, you can see that Alboron is in a tree. Oh. Looking down at the swirling snow, it's just there's no form to it. It's just swirling around the trunk of the tree, and he is hanging on for dear life. What's Alboron again? He's, he's that sorcerer rescue. rescue. He's, he's one of the people you're really looking to rescue. Oh yeah. Oh wait. I and, and actually, he's a sorcerer. So yeah. Why are oh. we rescuing him? But okay. Yeah. Yes. Let's. You will find out. Yeah. So he is up in the tree, swirling snow around the base. Uh, let me know if you want to just go in with weapons hot or if you want to approach and talk to him hmm. first or something. That's that's up to you. What do you want to do? I'm thinking, hmm, do you think, like, I'm trying to think of rangers because this might be metagaming a bit, but am I, you know what? My character has fought with other people before, so do you think that maybe I could, if I ran up and distracted them, you could go and hide in some bushes and, and shoot from afar? Not with my axe. I'll oh, I thought, her. Yeah, she gave I thought Rangers <laughs> had that. <laughs> Not this one. This one that goes for the lumberjack uh, vibe. <laughs> I, I, I am a. I got a big long handle on my ex, but man, I, I just. However, it's a problem when they're in their mist form. Hmm. My ex is not going to be effective until they take the form of the wolf, and then I can then I can hack them. But I'm not. Um, do we have any magic that might? cause them like food what do you got ah, let's see what we have if we have a nature roll um on your character sheet in your features traits and more mm -hmm. if there's anything in your class um that says something about bonuses you get for enemies i don't see any on my sheet so you might not have any i don't have any or krista might have hunter's mark at the very bottom there in prepared spells i don't know if you have a spell list or not but on my ranger it showed hunter's i have mark. um well i have spells protection from evil and the evil and good mm -hmm. sanctuary bless searing smite divine favor and thunderous smite whoa so you've got all the long range weapons you're the one that should be <laughs> hiding in the bushes and firing from afar <laughs> i don't know how many spell slots i have i don't know anything about paladins probably two i think it'll say on your um sheet somewhere here well okay. i have a belt pouch and this says I have a pet mouse, so I'll change my dog into a mouse. I have a pet mouse now. Oh, okay. Oh, cool. Uh, he, he's brave too. Oh, yeah. You want to put um, him out as bait? <laughs> yes. I sacrifice the mouse. I'm not sacrificing the mouse <laughs> under any circumstances. However, I think that if um, if I put the mouse out there and he runs across, that might cause them to chase the mouse getting them a out from under the tree and be close to me and i will ask them as they go by mm, brave mouse okay he yeah is. that sounds that sounds actable actable wrong now, word what what sort of weapons do you have um hold on let me see i have a hold on let me let me go back to it i have a a chainmail armor shield long sword that that would work that'd be good yep. yep long sword is good okay we're gonna hide in the bushes and we're gonna set the mouse to run along in front of us mm -hmm. and as the don't hit the mouse <laughs> <laughs> but we should see soon wolves on his tail five of them and we got to get them all mm. You send your little mouse out into the open 
and the mist that has been swirling around this tree takes form into the shapes of like almost wolves. They don't look exactly like wolves, but you can see why they were named ice wolves. Made completely out of snow and ice elementals. They look at the mouse and start rushing toward it. There's five of them, as you guessed. And as they pass your bushes, you guys are going to make, oh, first you're gonna do initiative roll to see who goes first. So both of you roll a D20. Okay. Wait, do I have an, do, isn't there like a little thing on the on the character sheet that tells me, tells me, don't we have like a natural thing? If you do, I'm not aware of it. It's yeah, isn't there like house. a number we add to, to, to uh, initiative rolls? Oh yeah, it's in between your um, speed and your armor class. It'll say initiative, a little picture of a dice. Okay, oh, I don't have any initiative, whoops. 17. 17 for Alia. Whoa. It's 22. my mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go first. And then let me roll for the wolves. Pretty sure they're not going first. Nope, they're going last. So Shinrai, you're up first. And if you want to make an attack, you'll roll a d20. And you will add, let me check my battle axe here, your strength modifier. I got a three. As well as proficiency. Uh, and I get so You rolled a three. Mm -hmm. Plus your strength little plus number. Oh, I got two on strength, so I got okay five, and then so what else? Five, and then your proficiency bonus that's right next to it, and two more, so I got seven. Seven with that seven, these ice elementals are so swift. You bring your axe down, and it comes right in between one's tail and the next one's nose, missing them so, so slightly. Then it's to Aldia. Do um, I get to run ahead or anything? Oh yeah, if you want to use your movement, you can use 30 feet of movement. All I right, what are going at it? I want to run okay. ahead following those okay. wolves. Okay, so you start running ahead following the wolves. And then now it's Aldia's turn. Okay, so what do what do I roll again? You're going to roll a D20. Mm -hmm. And then depending on the weapon that you're using, it'll have a little bonus to add. Item already, st weight three, damage 1d8, properties versatile. Like you want the first one, like on mine it says short sword, melee weapon attack, plus four to hit. You want the number to hit. Uh, Hold on, I'm, I'm on a long sword and for some reason it's not giving me that. No weapon attack on long sword? Well, most of them default to strength, so it would be your strength modifier plus proficiency. If you're proficient in that weapon. Do am I? Do I have? <laughs> Probably, because we're using the basic weapons and pretty much everybody is proficient in basic weapons in Dungeons and Dragons. Okay, so, so I just need to roll my strength? Yep, roll d20 plus strength plus proficiency. D strength, uh, 18 plus- That's good enough. Yep, good enough. As uh, Shinrai takes off ahead, one of the wolves is suddenly like, whoa, there's a person here, and hesitates just slightly, and down comes your long sword, and it hits for how much? You're going to roll My whatever it says for damage. long sword is 1d8 damage, slashing damage. All right, roll that d8. Okay, uh, d8, 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 d8. My d8 says three. Oh for three damage. So it clips off some of the ice, which just falls no longer magically moving. I did damage it right. Like, like yeah. to what I can see you did, okay. Yep, it's just got a shorter tail now. <laughs> cool. so then it's just ice, like an ice sculpture, just got a chunk knocked off of it. Doesn't even howl in pain or anything. It's just um, a collection of ice. Then hmm. you have your movement if you'd like to move. Hmm. I shall probably move. 
No, okay. wait. Do we need to move? Do you want me to move? Like, is that will that give me any sort of? Nah, then nah. It just depends on what you want to do. Like, if you want to go and help the guy on the tree, you can move toward the tree. If you want to go and follow Shinrai, because um, I should. Shinrai's I'm gonna go the help the dude. If like, if I'm not, if I go and I don't see like, if I can see, it's like if if uh, Shinrai is distracting the wolves, then I think I'll go help the dude in the tree. Okay. Yeah, so I, yeah, I run up to him. It's like, hey, hey, come on. I, I'll help you. Oh, thank goodness. I thought no one would come. And he starts struggling down the tree. And that would be about six seconds. So then we're going to go to the wolves who are up with Shinrai. So one's going to take a shot at Shinrai. And let me know what it says on your AC on your uh, character sheet. There's like a little shield that says armor class. Wait. Oh, never mind. Shinrai. 18. Whoa, that does not hit. So this icy beast tries to take a snap at you and misses. And then it's back to Shinrai's turn. Well, I want to attack this evil All guy. All right, go ahead and roll your d20. It's going to be the same thing, plus your strength, plus your proficiency. 13, and it was 2 and 2, so I've got 17. 17, boom. Okay, go ahead, and there should be an, uh, or actually, I have your axe stat, so let me tell you what to roll for damage. You're going to roll 1d8. 3. 3, okay. So this. Do I, I don't get to add anything. <laughs> uh, I add it for you. Oh, you get okay. To yeah. add, um, what's it called? It's a thing. <laughs> so that will be a total of, or excuse me, what do you roll again? Three. Three. Okay, so it's going to be minus three, minus another two. So that takes it. Oh, there we go. So a large chunk of ice just falls down to the snow, not able to go into mist anymore. And then do you want to move or are you taking a stand? I'm going after the rest of the wolves. So you're still trying to lead them away? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I'm trying to rescue my actual, my, my, my mouse now. Yeah, actually, you're following your mouse. <laughs> okay. yeah. Oh, no. Uh, to be honest, I forgot totally about this quest. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's Aldea's turn. So you're over at the tree helping down Alberon. Yeah, and like so holding out my arms in case he falls, you know? <laughs> okay, so he's struggling down the tree. <gasps> I ran, I ran out of spells about two miles back. I thought I thought I could never have run them. And he's down on the ground with you. But as he said, he has no spells left, doesn't seem to have any weapons, so he's kind of useless unless oh. you give him one. I do. I have a javelin. I can hand him a javelin. Okay. You hand Alberon a javelin. It's, yeah. Here you go. Oh, Many thanks. And he takes up the javelin. And do you want to move toward the wolves now, or what is your plan? Do um, hold on. I'm trying to think of words. Do I? Uh, I ask him. Do you think you can fare enough to help us defeat the rest of these wolves? I believe I can. And he starts taking up his javelin in attack stance. All right. Let's go help. Wait. What's the name again? Shinrai. Shinrai? Shin. Shinrai. Let's go help Shinrai. All right. So you guys are moving yeah. towards there. You get into the range to attack the wolf. So Aldia, give me a d20 roll. Don't the wolf have to do something first? The wolf? Don't they get a turn? Or are we sort of non fighting right now? We're, uh, yeah, it's going in order. The wolves go after Aldia. Okay. Oh, I get a 15. You have 15 plus your strength. My strength is, is, hold on, is, uh, is. Actually, you already beat their AC. So go ahead and give me damage. Roll a 1d8. Okay, roll a 1d8. Yeah, sorry, I got a bunch, of, I got a bunch of different web pages open. Me too. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the problem with it. Two. Okay, so we're going to say you finished off the one that was already pretty much banged up by Shinrai, and that one crumbles into ice and snow. Only four wolves left. 
And it's the wolves turn. So they are going to try to attack Aldia, who just took down one of their pack. Oh, not 20. So they definitely hit. Oh, no. And they only get a roll a d6, though, for their bite attack. Whoa. And two. You take two damage. Okay, so I have 25 health total. So now I am. Now you're at 23. Yeah. And it's back to Shinrai. So am I um, running with the wolves still? You are still running with the wolves? Yep. Attack. 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 All right. So I'm gonna roll, roll that 20. d 20. Yep. Five and four, nine. Oh, that's a swing and a miss. <laughs> I know. Um, and then. And I'm going to keep running with them. Okay. With them. Alberon's going to throw his javelin. Ooh, he got a 17 plus two. Yeah, so he's going to hit them for five damage. So one of these ice elementals gets pretty much cleaved in half and is still Ooh, nice. running. <laughs> and then it is Shinrai's turn. Oh. Oh. Oh, I, I was thinking Albion. He he threw the javelin. What about mm -hmm. what about Aldea? She goes after you. Yeah. Okay. Because I went and then he went. Yeah, I'm getting the cup two tries, but okay, good. I'm going, of course, to attack okay. them. Yep, go ahead and roll your D20. Roll 20. Ten and four. Fourteen. <gasps> Perfect. So that one connects and go ahead and roll a D8 to see how much damage is brought upon these ice elementals. Three. Three. Oh, this one's just barely hanging on. And then Aldia, your turn. All right. So um, I think, wait, hold on. Now that um, what's his name is like is out of javelin. Is he all right? Yeah, he's gonna run and pick it up. <laughs> oh, okay, that's good. Okay, then I'll, I'll attack. I, I'll attack, I roll a 20, right? Yep, you're gonna roll a 20. I got a 10 plus my strength is- Up oh, 10, that gets it. So go ahead and roll for damage, a d8. Okay, d8, I got a eight. Would you like to take down one that has not been hit yet, or do you want to finish off the one that Shinrai had uh, wounded I already? I assume, like, take down another one, because I assume if I can kill, you know? Okay, this one goes down. It's barely hanging on. So you've got two of them that are just a tiny pile of moving ice, and then the other two are at full health, but it is 620. So we're going to do just a little bit of drawing and we'll have to continue this epic battle My next mouse. time. My Your mouse. mouse, I know. So let me switch on over to our drawing camera and let's talk about doing a multi-figure composition. I think Kristen was the only one to finish the one with uh, Ling and uh, the Blue Jay passing. Oh, right. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. What? Go ahead. The Bell of Hua Hu. Yeah, that was the one that you guys were playing last last term, and you had your Blue Jay character, and Kristen had Ling, and I had the snobby elf character who turned out to be the villain. Yeah, yeah, I'm just thinking like, wait, like I was just, I was in the middle of saving a file and I didn't hear what you said. Like, I was, okay. I was saying that Kristen was the only one to finish her piece from uh, that one. <laughs> we, you and I, we sketched them out, but we didn't, we didn't finish them. So just a um, quick little review. Let's find subjects or like, what we answer? We answer who somebody has to be in the picture. So that's going to be your characters. That's going to be Shinrai. And Aldia. And if you want to, optional, Alberon. Then we need a what are they doing? We could okay. use the 
the little guy who sold us the that would not be an exciting oh, yeah. shot but it wouldn't be there. an exciting shot okay but you could also have sam in this shop if you want to do this shop scene you need to have a what are they doing i'm gonna write what doing because we're running out of time here and then where are they so wait, wait what is this assignment are we supposed to like complete this we're going to make a sketch. We're not going to make a full thing, but we're going to make a sketch that if we had like a poster, like let's say this game was a movie and we want a poster to go along with it, or you want an image to remember this great campaign that you played. We're going to just draw a moment from the story so far. So you can either draw buying your cold gear in the shop, or you can draw finding clues along the trail for the fight with the ice beasts. I'm going to decide my sentence first or my story that I'm going to illustrate. So I'm going to say tracking on the trail and I'm going to use Shinai and Albia. And we're going to sketch out four possible versions. So I could have tracks on the ground. You just start drawing out the idea that you wrote down. So if I'm going to draw them studying the tracks, I can have somebody crouch down low. Look at these tracks. The other one putting a hand to their chin going, hmm, these look like tracks all right. And where are they? They're out in the snow. There might be mountains. There might be trees. So this is what we're talking about. This is how finished we're going to get probably in this class. Is just enough so that I can tell where would you draw the characters. Can I tell what they're doing? And where are they? I could do the scene at the bridge. Maybe there's claw marks. Again, my mountains in the back, snow covered. We have one character here. One character here. Again, crouch down, looking closely. Maybe I want to see the tracks from a bird's eye view. There's that axe. And remember, this is like a poster, so you're going to need a room for the title of search and rescue, or if you want to think of a cooler name, you can do that. But you need room to put the words.
Yeah, I'm have I I'm just gonna say I'm having a lot of fun. All right. Yeah. This character is very different than others I've played, and that's <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. That's part of the fun, isn't it? To to be different. Yeah. So the only homework really is we need to know what these characters look like so we can draw them in these posters someday. So as soon as you have your characters somewhat solidified yeah. and drawn, then we'll know what they look like. We can use them as reference. Yeah, I do need to do that. Also need to learn how to draw armor. Oh, well, I'll just make her, I guess I'll just make her armor really simple. Yeah, I find that the um, Fire Emblem Awakening, I think, had pretty simple armor. Somebody even drew a whole chart of just like all the different armor pieces. Fire Emblem Awakening armor. No, okay, I'll search that out. I remember it was a really neat. Uh, Thing where they just separated out all the chest pieces, all the arm pieces, and people could mix them and match them. Do you play Fire Emblem? I've played a couple of the games, but they're kind of hit or miss. I mean, sometimes they're bad and really bad, and then other times they're pretty okay. Mm. So you have to like tactical games. Some people find tactical games really boring. Oh no, I can't get into that. I'm not very good at tactics. Nope, then not probably not the game for you. Yeah, the best tactic I have is make my guy strong enough that I don't have to use any strategy. I just make a <laughs> punch. <laughs> I like that that one too. Give me a big axe. <laughs> yeah, just let me be strong and let me hit stuff. Huh? Uh... Yeah, like kind of like in Pokemon games where it's like you, you make your Pokemon so strong that typing doesn't really matter. Exactly. Oh, hey, also, I watched Porco Rosso yesterday. <laughs> Great oh, movie. I like that one. Yeah, you know, and I wasn't expecting to like it, but, mm -hmm. uh, but I loved it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's so good. I'm tempted to, to just get like a physical copy of it so I can just have it. For sure. Yeah, I always feel that way too. Whenever I find a movie that I'm like, this is pretty great. I think I need to own it. Well, I yeah. will find that chart hopefully by next week and you guys can refine your armor. <laughs> 